Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie, and welcome back to Beginning Interactive Fiction with Twine in Sugar video tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be diving into macros. And macros are kind of a complicated topic, so in this episode, we're just going to be dipping our toes in the water, so to speak. You won't exactly see how you can use them with a story, but rather, you're gonna learn the basic formatting on how to create a macro. In future episodes, I'm gonna show you how we can intertwine this macro into our own story, and then how you can ultimately save time by using macros. Macros are a nice evolution to objects. In the last episode, I introduced you to objects and working with objects. Objects, as you remember, are simply a collection of key value pairs. You provide a key, which is a string, and then you can provide a value to it. And that value can be another string, or it could be a number, or it could be a Boolean value. I'm gonna open up my edit story JavaScript within Twine like so. And here, we'll just quickly review our objects. Objects are created, of course, by using the set macro, and you can't use the set macro inside this JavaScript console. What you actually have to do in JavaScript, you start off with the keyword var, standing for variable, and then I'm just gonna create my object, like so, and then I have an open curly brace and a closing curly brace. This curly brace creates an object for us. It is what we call an object literal in JavaScript. If this terminology is kind of freaking you out, just sit back and just take it all in because we're not gonna be diving too deep into the programming aspects of JavaScript. And what we do is we provide a key for this object. So in this place, in this case, I'm gonna call this gold and I'm gonna put a colon and then I'm gonna put a value, which is, the, which is a thousand. And then I could access my object by doing something like this, my object dot gold. And what happens is then I get that value of a thousand. So if I want to write player gold equals my object dot gold, the variable player gold would equal a thousand. Again, this is working with JavaScript. In SugarCube, we would do something like this. We'll say set my object equals, and then we would write it out like so, and then we would put a close set like that. But again, this doesn't work within the JavaScript console editing area within Twine. You have to do this within your story passages. Objects can also have what we call methods. And methods are simply actions. You can think of an object as a noun, and a method is something that you do on that noun. Let's take, for instance, we want to create a method that would increase the gold of my object. I could just say, write something like this, increase gold, like that, increase God, no. And then we'd put a colon just like that, and then we have something we write a function, and this function just allows us to create reusable code. And we put an open brace here, and we put a closing brace like so. So the way I would increase the gold is first I would type this. And this is just a keyword in JavaScript. All I'm doing is referring to this object. So I'm saying this, I wanna access the variable within this object, and the variable I wanna access is gold. And we'll say this gold equals this gold plus one. And then when you actually call my object, and then you call the method increase gold, this, what we'll do, will increase the amount of gold by one. Now, that's just a long way of doing this. We could do gold plus equals one like so. But this method here is an action that this object can perform. Now, for the most part, we don't create methods in our objects in Twine. We just simply add properties and values to it. So don't, don't worry too much about working with methods. So why did I want to introduce you to the concept of a method? Well, it's important when you get to working with macros because you have to know a little bit of JavaScript to really do some work within a macro. Okay, so let's step back from this, and I'm just gonna delete this here, and now we're gonna talk about macros. Well, what is a macro? Believe it or not, you've been using macros throughout this entire series. If you open up, you can see set. This is a macro. 
we're setting the variable door closed to equal true. We have also set here, we're creating a backpack object. Later, we have a print macro, and this is printing out the contents of our backpack. These are things that are defined in JavaScript. And what's really awesome about macros is they allow you to encapsulate code so you don't have to repeat yourself. Repeating yourself in computer programming is a sin. Basically, when you first sit down and you start working on code, the first thing you learn is DRY. Do not repeat yourself. Why is that? Well, let's imagine here we're working on a sequence of events and we wanted to do some code that would calculate the player's health. And if the player house health is, is below zero or zero, we want to print out a message to say that player has died. Well, what I would do is I could write some code here to check the player's health. And then I could go into here and write copy and paste and write that same code here. And then I could go down in here and add this, this code to check the player's health. And we could imagine this would be in a case of when a player is, say, walking through some place that has gas and it's slowly poisoning, it, poisoning him. Well, if we did that in these three different passages, and later we decide, well, I want to provide a message that will say to the, the player that they're getting low on health when their health is around 10. Okay, can you see the problem here? Now I have to go to this passage and change it. I have to go to this passage and change it. And I have to go to this passage and change it. So those are three passages. And what happens is since these are identical, this is identical code, there's a possibility that in fixing this one or updating this version, I may introduce a bug. I may introduce an unexpected bit of code when essentially these should be the same. This is where a macro comes in. We create a macro to essentially bundle up that code. And instead of writing blocks of code in each individual passage, we can simply call this one macro. And then if we need to change this macro for any reason, we change it in one place. Again, do not repeat yourself. In that way, all the passages that are using that macro acquire that update without having me to manually finagle things into place. So the way we develop our macros is by going into the edit story JavaScript. And what we do first is we're going to add a new macro to this already existing object called macros. So first I'm gonna type macros like this. And now I'm going to give my macro a name. So in this case, I'm just going to call this hello world. The very first thing you do when doing any computer development is writing what is called hello world. That is printing out text to the console that simply says hello world. And that's what we're going to do in this macro. So here we have hello world. And then what I'm gonna do is put an equal sign and then an open brace and a closing brace. Now, do you recognize this? That's right, I'm creating an object. In Sugarcube, all macros must have one method. And this is gonna be the same method in every macro. It's called handler. And then I'm gonna put a colon like this, and now I'm gonna write my method like that. The method I showed you didn't take any parameters. It just had an open parentheses and a closed parentheses. In this case, we're going to pass in parameters. And this is just data. These are variables that are passed into the method that we can act on. So the first one is place. And this place is the passage in the story that is happening. Next, it is the macro name, if you need this for any reason. Next are any per other additional parameters that are passed into your macro. And then we have a parser object. And that's it. This is how you create your macro. Pretty exciting, huh? Well, the thing is, if you're looking at this and the code is a little overwhelming, then what, is, what you can simply do is copy this and paste it onto your desktop. Because the only thing you'll need to change when creating your own macro is the name of the macro. So this, this handler has to be identical. Now you can also add other properties as well. For instance, I could add, say, my gold property, like this, and I can do it just like I did in the previous object. Now you'll notice here that the handler doesn't have quotes around it. 
When working with objects in JavaScript, quotes aren't required. I prefer to use quotes, but this is equally as valid, like so. Now we're going to print out some text in our passage. And we do this by using an already existing object called the Wikifier. Now the SugarCube documentation doesn't mention the Wikifier, and if it does, it's basically in passing. The Wikifier, I believe, is an object that comes from a framework called Twee, which is what Twine is built on. Now I could be completely wrong about this assertion, but there's no other documentation to point me in the right direction. What the Wikifier does is it allows us to print text into our passage. And the way we do that is we're going to use the JavaScript keyword new, and we're going to create a new Wikifier like this. And now the first thing I need to pass into the Wikifier is the place. So this is the passage where we want text to be written to. And as you can see, we have the place being passed into us already. And then finally, we'll just write the text, hello world, like that. And that is our macro. Again, what I suggest if this stuff is a little bit overwhelming to you, you simply copy it and paste it. And the only stuff you need to change occurs within this line here. In the next video, I'll show you how we can start using these macros in our stories. But for now, I just want you to get an idea of how to work with them. Okay, I'm gonna close this now. And in Brig, we're gonna come in here and the first thing we're going to do is let's underneath these set calls, actually let's do this at the top. So up top here, I'm going to use our new macro which is hello world like that. And then I'm going to play and you can see it prints out hello world to the screen. Now that might seem like a lot for just a small bit of text. But as you start using macros, you can use them to encapsulate behavior into your stories. Like say for instance, you wanted to have a dice roller. For instance, you're working on an RPG and it's important for you to roll random numbers. Well, you could create a macro that would do that. And you could just say, you could run it like this. You could say, roll dice. And that would roll, say, a six-sided die and provide you a value. And at this point, you can see that our simple twine story is now increasing in complexity. Learning code isn't that difficult. It just takes time, practice, and study. If you are interested in taking your stories to the next level, then I highly suggest you start learning JavaScript. JavaScript is the programming language of the web, and there are a gazillion free tutorials out there that will get you up and running. The Probably one of the better ones is located at Khan Academy. It will walk you through the process of learning JavaScript without any programming experience whatsoever. I hope you found this video useful. In the next video, we're going to build on what we learned here and start integrating macros specifically to our story into the game. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will see you in the next one. See you then.